Ebenezer, or Eben Byers, he was the personification of the Roaring Twenties. Yeah, okay. He was the Gatsby or whatever. Yeah, he's, 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 like he's loving the, the golf. He's doing the stuff. He's the yeah, guy. Okay. 1927, he was 47 years old. He's coming home on a chartered train after watching the Harvard-Yale football game, and he fell asleep, and he rolled out and hurt his arm. Oh, shit. Poor little fella. It's terrible. So the injury and the run-downedness did not respond well to regular medical intervention. So he'd been to the doc, and the doc's ah, like, let's, right. I don't know, jump up and down and breathe deeply and eat a steak. Didn't work. So his physiotherapist, uh, Dr. Moyer, said, start drinking Radithor. 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 <laughs> Radithor. Eben took his doctor's advice, and the first prescription – that he got from the doctor started him on the path to becoming, quote, Radithor's most famous customer. Did it help him? So the quote from the 1930s Time magazine article was, the dope eased the arm pain and braced buyers up. Okay. What's in Radithor? Distilled water, and one source says triple distilled, plus at least one micro curie or 37 becquerel <laughs> each of radium-226 and radium-228. <laughs> the ingredients other than water were radium with a little mesothorium just for, you know, tang, <laughs> a little spice. AKA, <laughs> Radithor was radium water. Oh my God. So the rad doesn't stand for sick moves on a skateboard. It's, no, it's, it's for radium. fucking radium. And so for the next two years, buyers drank two or three bottles of Radithor a day. Uh-huh. He wasn't doing well. Hard to imagine, right? No. So a radiologist and a prominent radium expert from Columbia Uni looked at some radiographs that were taken of Eben. Mm -hmm. They confirmed that he was slowly decomposing Uh as a result of the massive radium intoxication. The Federal Trade Commission, the FTC, filed a complaint of false advertisement or false advertising, and to back up their claim, they thought, we'll go and talk to buyers and get testimony about the bullshit about Mm. Radithor. An attorney for the FTC, a guy called Robert Wynne, went to buyers at his Southampton home, one of his homes. A more gruesome experience in a more gorgeous setting would be hard to imagine. Oh, oh, oh. All right. I'm, I'm imagine- how, you, how are you feeling? <laughs> well, I'm kind of imagining Skeletor in his summer palace or something like that. Skeletor at least had a complete skeleton. <laughs> we went up to Southampton where Byers had a magnificent home. Then we discovered him in a condition which beggars description. Oh, God. Young in years and mentally alert, he could hardly speak. His head was swathed in bandages. He had undergone two successive operations in which his whole upper jaw, except two front teeth, and most of his lower jaw had been removed. Oh. All the remaining bone tissue of his body was slowly disintegrating and holes were formed actually oh. in, in his skull. Oh. So 1931, the FTC dropped a cease and desist order halting all production in Bailey Radium Labs of producing Radithor. Stop. And basically by December of 1931, radium-infused drinks were removed from the market. They were gone. Oh, man. This was, of course, too late for Eben Myers. Yeah. So he died of radium poisoning in April of 1932. How long after the testifier? About five months. Okay. Why didn't this become a full-on public health crisis? Because it's an it's energy drink. It's popular. Two good reasons. One was most radium drinks lied. There was no radium in them. <laughs> Thank you, frauds. Thank you. You actually you, did something good you, for once. You did it good. Oh, Jesus mm. Christ. And a win for capitalism and its positive effects on public health, which we talk about all the time, because Radithor was super expensive, so fuck all people could buy it. Oh, only rich people died. So the ones that actually had radium in it were only available to okay, very few no, people. Cool, cool, So cool. I'm with capitalism that. I'm is with a public that. health benefit. Yeah, it killed the rich people. So take it all back. Let's just keep doing it. Yep. You want to make people better, make only rich people buy dumb shit. I fixed it. So Bayer's death pretty clearly facilitated the collapse of all the radioactive patent medicines. Like the people just went, no, it's, it's over. The industry's fucked. Yeah. But Bailey, the original guy, the, the creator, never stopped insisting it was safe. After all, he said, he had probably drunk more of it than anyone else and he felt fine. He suffered no legal consequences for selling the stuff and died a wealthy man. Fun epilogue though. So he died in 1949 of bladder cancer. Uh-huh. 20 years after he died, he was exhumed. And? His remains were, quote, still hot when pulled from the ground. Oh, wow. And they described his body or his remains as having been ravaged by radiation. But he survived a long time. Somehow. Some people do. Oh, my God. There is a core of radiation that actually, actually Absolutely. is useful. Absolutely. It's just how wild they went in the 1910s and 1920s. Don't, with- don't give it to cowboys. <laughs> Unless they just take out the billionaires. <laughs> <laughs>